a faraway country, there lived a miller. This miller had a beautiful daughter. The miller talked about his daughter to anyone who cared to listen and showered praises on her. Sometimes he got carried away so much that he even said things that weren't true. One day, the king came to the woods to hunt. The miller was very glad to tell the king about his daughter. She's the prettiest and smartest girl in this country, the miller boasted. Why? She can even spin gold out of straw. The miller bit his tongue, but it was too late. The king got down from his horse at once. He was very fond of money, and he realized that this was a great opportunity to pile up on some gold for his treasury. Send your daughter to the palace tonight, and we'll see if your words are true, said the king. There was nothing to do but to obey the king. What a beautiful day! Yes, Dad, it's a splendid day, isn't it? What are you doing, my dear? I'm stitching something for you, but it isn't finished yet. It's ready now. It's a new shirt for you, Dad. I want to add some beautiful embroidery on it. Will you help me? We need to put together a beautiful pattern. Father, try the shirt on now. It will fit you perfectly. You are so wonderful. Yes, it really fits me well. Thank you so much. Good day, Your Majesty. Hello. What a wonderful shirt I see on your father. He made the shirt for me, Your Majesty. Look at this beautiful pattern. Well, your daughter is a seamstress. Yes, she is the best in this town. Why? She could even spin gold out of straw. Is that true? Send your daughter to the palace and we'll see if your words are true. Oh, oh, oh. The miller's daughter was very nervous. She was led to a chamber with a big heap of straw and a spinning wheel. I want all this straw to be spun into gold by morning, said the king. The chamber was locked, and there was no use banging on the door and protesting that it had been all the fault of her father for boasting like that. Not knowing what else to do, she curled up in a corner beside the spinning wheel and began to weep. Bang! She looked up in surprise when the door opened. In walked a comical little man. Good day to you, lady, he called out cheerfully. What is the matter? Why do you cry like this? I'm crying over my fate. I'm supposed to spin all this straw into gold by morning, but I have no clue how to do it, she said. He looked at the straw and the spinning wheel. I think I can help you with this. But what will you give me in exchange for my service? Asked the little man. You can have my necklace if you can only do this, she said. He nodded and immediately set to work. He chanted a few words and spun the wheel. The work was done quickly and there was a pile of gold. When the king came inside to check on the progress, he couldn't believe his eyes. His eyes shone when he saw the glittering gold. But being a greedy fellow, he decided to make her spin some more straw into gold. He ordered for a fresh pile of straw to be spun by morning. She began to weep again, and most surprisingly, the same little man came again. This time, she promised to give him her ring for helping her out. The little man took her ring and worked at the spinning wheel, and in a very short time, all the straw had been spun into gold. In the morning, the king came to the chamber and rubbed his hands in delight when he saw more gold. But do you think that he was satisfied? No, he wanted more gold. He ordered more straw to be brought in. Perform the miracle one more time, turn all the straw into gold, and you shall be my queen, he said. The miller's daughter sat down gloomily, and soon enough... The little man came again. What do you have? 
to trade for my services, he demanded. I have nothing else to give you, she said sadly. The little man thought for a while. You'll be queen soon. If you promise to give me your first-born child, I'd be glad to spin this all into gold right away, he said. The miller's daughter agreed. All she wanted was to get the job done. The king has set me an impossible task. What should I do now? Why are you crying, young lady? His majesty has ordered me to spin all this straw into gold by morning. He said that if I manage to do it, I'll become his queen. But if I fail, he will behead me. Well, this is quite impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is impossible. Let's see. Is this all the straw you have to spin into gold? There's more straw in the little rooms behind these doors. Let's start with the straw in the small room. Wow! What will you give me if I spin all the straw here? Let's see what I've got. No! This symbol is too big for my finger. No! I don't need your shoes. I'll take this one. I don't have such a necklace. Wow! More straw! I can spin this into gold, too. What do I get for my service? Let's see what else I've got. No! I have scarves way more beautiful than this. Darling, I don't have a lot of hair to use the comb. I guess this ring will fit me just fine. There's a lot of straw in this room. I can spin it all into gold, no problem. What will you offer for this? It better be something good. I have only my shoes, a comb and a thimble. Take whatever you want. I don't need any of those. But if you promise me that you will give me your first-born child, after you become a queen, then I'll help you. Oh, all right, anything. But please help me to stay alive today. I will show you how to work at the spinning wheel, and you can collect all the gold. Well... That's all. No more straw left. Thank you for your help. Now the king would spare me. The king was very pleased to see that there was a big pile of gold in the corner. I'm keeping my promise. We're getting married, said the king. The miller's daughter became the queen, and they lived happily together. They had a baby girl and everybody was celebrating. The queen had long forgotten about her promise. But one day, while she was playing with her baby, the little man came inside. Remember your promise. I've come to take your baby, he said. The queen was horrified. Oh, please don't take my baby away from me. I'll be heartbroken, she wailed. But the little man remained persistent. I'll give you half the kingdom, but please don't ask for my child, she begged. He shook his head. She cried so hard that he finally felt some pity for her. OK, here's the deal. I'll give you three days to find my name. If you succeed, you can keep your baby, he said. I'll come every day to see if you can guess my name. The queen thanked him profusely. The queen lay awake all night, making a list of all possible names she could think of. The next day, when the little man came, the queen began. Is your name Timothy? No. Is it Benjamin? No. Jeremiah? That isn't right. Ichabod? Ah, uh, no. Tobias? Try again. Gregory? That's not my name. Finally, the little man left. The next day, the queen came up with funny and silly names. Hey, is your name Sticklegs? Uh, no. Owl Eyes? Nah. 
Rabbit Tooth. That isn't my name. Mophead. No. Fluffy Beard. Wrong. Shaggy Brows. Keep guessing. Look, my darling, there are so many interesting things here. Look at those beautiful birds. Let's find a green bird. Right, this bird has a green colour. Now, let's learn to find shapes. Can you find a bush that has a round shape? No, the bush looks like a square. A square has four sides and they are all the same length. That's right, this bush has a round shape. Wheels and the moon are round in shape too. Can you see those trees? Let's spot the biggest of them. That's right, this tree is the biggest. Mummy, can you help me dress up my doll? We need to dress the doll fashionably. Hello, Your Majesty. You look so happy. I hope you haven't forgotten the promise you made to me a long time ago. Now you've become a queen, I've come to take your child. Oh no! Take anything you want but not my daughter, please! Take the carriage! It's made out of gold! No! I move through the air. I don't need a carriage. You can live in our palace. There are lots of rooms for you to choose from. I don't want to live in your palace. I need your daughter. Take this treasure chest. There are so many coins and jewels inside. It'll be enough to last you a lifetime. No, I'm a modest person. I don't need that much. I can't live without her. She's my only child. OK. Here's the deal. I'll give you three days to find out my name. If you succeed, you can keep your baby. She told him everything she could think of, but he kept shaking his head. The queen was really scared. There was only one day left. She called her trusted guards and asked them if they had found out where the little man lived. But nobody had a clue. But suddenly, a guard came running inside. Your Highness, I believe I have found the man you've been looking for. He lives in a hut on a high hill in the forest, said the guard. Tell me more, the Queen prompted. He lit a fire in front of his hut and danced around it, clapping his hands and singing a strange song, the guard added. Do you remember what he sang? The Queen asked eagerly. Merrily shall I feast, merrily I will dance and sing. For the lady does not know that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. The Queen clapped her hands in delight. This is exactly what I wanted to know, she said. The next day, the little man came and grinned at the Queen. Let's start. Is your name Griffith? Not at all. How about Daniel? No. Surely your name has to be Gerald. It isn't. Are you Rumpelstiltskin? The little man stared in surprise and horror. How did you find my name? He asked in dismay. You didn't guess my name. You found it out from someone. But a promise was a promise. He could not take the Queen's baby. Rumpelstiltskin was so furious that he stamped hard on the ground. Whoosh! Both his feet went into the ground, and Rumpelstiltskin was never seen again. Your Majesty, you still haven't guessed my name. Stop wasting my time, and let me take your daughter. Wait, I'll try again. We have to find the name of this fellow, whatever it takes. Maybe your name is Rumpelstiltskin. What? How did you find out? How could you know? 
Seems that Rumpelstiltskin doesn't want to leave the palace. We have to help him find his way out.